Okay, and we're back with the third part of the process, which is optimism. So we're really excited about this. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Optimistic that this is going to be an yeah. important part of our winning process. And it certainly is, John. So this comes from the uh, work of Martin Seligman, who is oh, uh, very Professor good. Mm-hmm. Post, uh, oh, very the American good. Psychological Association. And Seligman was brought in by MetLife. Now, MetLife is one of the largest insurance companies in the world. And MetLife had a problem shared by many of their competitors. They were losing half of their new recruits in the first year. Forget about how to predict who would sell the most policies. They couldn't even predict who was going to stick out in the company. Mm -hmm. And they wanted to work out what would – what wasting $75 million a year in hiring costs, they wanted to work out what were likely to be – the essential qualities in top salespeople. And it was not qualifications. It wasn't even work experience. Uh, Seligman comes in and he discovers the key ingredients in top salespeople is optimism. Mm-hmm. So what is an optimist? An optimist is somebody expects the best. They're quick to turn problems into opportunities. The optimist falls up out of a window of a 40-story building, passing by the 20 that he'd said himself, so far, so good. <laughs> so, of course, we're not naive optimism. Uh, but what we're talking about and is, is the positive expectation that eventually I will get the deal. Why is this so critical in sales? Well, it's so critical quite simply because of this. And this is the most important number for all of us in pitching and sales to know, is that it takes between five and 12 exposures to a mu- new product or service or person before people will be comfortable enough to buy. Mm-hmm. Five to 12 exposures. That means... In pitching and sales, we are going to get rejected a lot. We're going to hear the word no a lot. Now, of course, the pessimist, they might be very smart, very qualified, but the pessimist says they said no, no means forever. The optimist says if I change my approach, get back in there, do something a little different, there's a good chance eventually they will buy, right? So the optimist goes back. It's really as simple as that. Optimism is the mindset of persistence, and persistence is absolutely critical when it comes to sales because of all that projection. And what I like to add here as well is the reason why people take long. You know, this idea that you've got early adopters and late mm-hmm. adopters, I, I think is a bit of a misnomer. We, we are all late adopters. Some are a little bit later than others, but nobody, very few people immediately take on a new product or service because quite frankly, that would not be very smart. Right. There's a process of assessment that's required, of comfort that's required, and it has to also do with these caveman brains of ours, which evolved to deal with a very threatening environment. The first time the caveman saw those red berries, and by the way, your product service, if they never heard of it before, even if sometimes they have, it's the red berries. It's something that look might look great, but hey, that could be poisonous, you know? Mm-hmm. And so, the caveman ancestor did not immediately eat the red berries. They first, you know, gave them to the dog, then gave them to that <laughs> uncle they didn't like so much, and then they might have tasted it. You know, they might have had a sample, right, which is why sampling is so powerful in pitching as well. But it took them a while to say yes, and so it's critical for us in sales and pitching to understand this. In fact, my, my book, Pitch to Win, I I, uh, I was tempted at one point to call it Pitch to Lose, to Lose, to Lose, so that eventually you can win, uh, right. which I don't think would have made a very a big a big thing title so we didn't do that but the truth is that is the reality Mm -hmm. you're going to lose many times Mm -hmm. before you win and so you've really got to develop the mindset of optimism the great thing is we can develop the Seligman has proved it I've got a great process in my book in my program where I teach this and I've seen people really shift out of pessimism the ones who are giving up when they heard that now getting dejected after that projection and who really are now sticking it out and ultimately, those tend to be the most successful people, the yeah. ones who stick it out. Yeah, yeah. No, I couldn't agree more. And we're big fans of Seligman ourselves here uh, at, at, at Pipeliner and, and Sales Pop. And I think the other thing is, um, is, is Justin, is, is optimism is, I think, um, number one, obviously, people feed off it. But number two, I mean, it's it's the people who believe that there is a solution. And as you say in sales, like you're going to get a lot of rejection. But if you always believe that there is a solution to whatever problem or obstacle you're you're facing. I think that allows you to get into an optimistic frame of mind. I think, you know, a lot of people just give up. But, I mean, I think what you, you've got to do is even in the bleakest moments of your life say, okay, there's a solution. I just need to find it. Absolutely. And, in fact, John, that, that talks to the two questions that I teach 
to shift from pessimism to optimism. And one of them is, what can I do about this? Mm -hmm. what, which, which is what prompts the brain to the solution. And the brain is very responsive to the questions we ask, but we've got to ask the right questions. If you ask, why can't I get what I want? The brain will find an answer, you know, because you're an idiot, <laughs> because <laughs> there's no opportunities, or because, you know, the economy is bad. Or because the brain will find a reason to stop your finding a solution. So we don't want to ask, why can't I? We, we want to ask, how can I? Yeah. What can I do differently? What are those possible solutions? And know that every rejection is also a potential lesson. Hey, what can yeah. I learn from this? What mm -hmm. could I do differently? Mm -hmm. Right? There's real opportunity. You know, Bill Gates, I was doing some work with Microsoft recently, and what an inspiration that man is. I know, he, he, you know, he might not have the kind of the sizzle of, <laughs> of Steve Jobs, but when you look at what he, he says, what's fascinating about not quite the world's richest man anymore, but, but uh, is that he's obsessed with failure. So some of the pearlers from, from Bill Gates, he says, you know, success, the biggest impediment to progress is success mm -hmm. because it makes us complacent. Right. It's failure that gets you going, hey, okay, I didn't get this deal. What happened? What, you know, what can I, I can tell you something that, that my, I would say my career has been built on my own setbacks. It's when mm -hmm. things that don't go right that you go, hey, okay, what can I do different again? That's what makes us better. This is the beautiful thing about, about pain, about setback is that it's not to be shunned. It's to it's really a call to be better, to find those solutions you were talking about. Yeah, absolutely. And we know that analogy. I mean, if you're if you're into fitness or any sport like that is, um, as you're getting better at it, you know, you're going to suffer more pain um, temporarily. You know, if you're working, if you're pumping iron or whatever, you're going to go through a lot of pain until the pain lessens and then you can lift more or whatever and then you get a little more pain. So pain is always, a, pain's a precursor to progress, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm.